So this is Greg, welcome, guys. Welcome to Friday's Flavor. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Friday's Flavor. This is Greg, a good friend of mine, and he's like a staple to this community. I, I love watching your videos. His family has had a business in this in this neighborhood for 77 years. Yeah. Um, we love the Capital Region, both of us. Um, yeah. So you've been a staple to this community for a long time. I think we both yeah. have very strong ties to the community as well as strong mm -hmm. feelings on how it's being managed and taken mm -hmm. care of. Um, and yeah. so I think what brought us together was our, our common love for the capital region itself, New York as a whole, and, and the people that come out of here. I think we have the, the best communities come, come out of upstate New York, the best people are in, best, in upstate New York and you wouldn't even know it. Best kept secret. Yeah. Well, firstly, thanks for having me on. It, it, sure. It's great to be part in, of, uh, of your show and, uh, you know, learning more about you the past uh, months has been fun. I'm right with you. I'm excited. Uh, see, all right. So our family has owned Quail Auto Sales in Albany, New York for uh, 77 years this year. And so right there, it's, you're innately uh, intertwined with your hometown. Yeah. Because there's deep roots. You know, my grandfather came from Sicily. They came to New York City and came up. And I, I do care very much. There's an ambivalence, though, 100%. I've been vocal about that in my adult life and especially throughout my, you know, 19 and a half year career of, um, of being thankful to, to travel the country and speak and see different communities and, and listen and learn. Uh, so I'm always ambivalent in the way of sometimes it just stays flatlined. Um, because when there's a spike in economy, it still stays flat nine. And if there's sort of a recession of sort, the economy in the capital region, my uh, estimate, it, it stays it stays neutral. And that's good for, you know, solvency and the sense of, you know, um, foundation for raising a family. And there's great yeah. educational uh, resources in the capital, 100%, some of the oh, top yeah. of the nation. And, and, and you know, that's treat, taken a hit, but it has taken a hit. You know, you know what aggravates me though a little bit before that is I feel, and I said this even when I was in college 20 some odd years ago, that I, I in, in my studies and my travels, I've always felt the capital region maybe underutilized the, even the, the, the young minds are, are coming out of say RPI to keep them here. I've always thought this, that the capital region uh, really should be 20 years advanced. Like, I mean, solar powered lights, weird, great things. Let them use yeah. the robotics. That's what their yeah. minds are for. That's their gift. Instead of being jealous and try to monopolize everything, yeah. how about just celebrate the person's gift? Every, and, everyone talks about that, but they never want to like celebrate someone else's. Not everybody, but you get the point. Yeah, that. and that's the yeah. roots of Schenectady too. I mean, if you think about it, that's the roots of the capital region. In Schenectady, Edison. we have GE. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, everything that we yeah. that came out of you mm -hmm. know New York and, and upstate in particular, in terms of like yeah. the light bulb, um, electricity, GE, all of that stuff was made us very innovative way back when. Now, at yeah. one at one point or another, we sort of started to slide back, and maybe we're a little less innovative than than we could be. I agree. I think we could be twenty years into the future and they yeah. like, you see some little sub areas where it's happening like downtown schenectady is really ticked up a lot a lot yeah. i wish they would do the same for downtown albany i think the dip now i was on a uh, committee once for a year at the palace theater uh, met, uh some nice people are on a committee and they brought me in uh for a creative eye and um basically to try to reach a younger audience and they had it they had an a good model, but it needed to be great because where it was at. And I love that, you know, this is, these, this is, these are, there's never personal with me. It's just business. Right. Um, I, first of all, I love the palace. I perform there and Proctor's in Schenectady and they're beautiful. When I was on the committee, I would ask folks, what do you, when you go out to the capital region, what do you do theater wise, you know, between Proctor's or the palace and the tipping point went to Proctor's. And uh, the scale, rather, I should say. And I asked why, and they said they just felt more safe. Yeah. So, you know, I brought that up in, you know, discussions with the committee. And, um, and it just, it seems that with Albany, um, the, the safety issue is real. Right, and it is. 
there are little things that you can do to brighten up a, a downtown. Okay. It, it's even just better. You have to have brighter lights mm -hmm. and you have to have residents down there. And people will say, well, no, there are people down there and they're building down there. I say, yeah, I understand that. I'm not denying that. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's always a, a push and pull effect where there's not enough to sustain downtown. There's not nearly enough. I mean, stop being ignorant. You know, this isn't the only city in the world, the capital region. This isn't it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, Schenectady, Albany, uh, Troy combined, you make up Austin, Texas. So alone. So I've always felt with everything to, there's bright spots in these cities, uh, right up to Saratoga. And I really feel that the region could always do better or more to work together because I've worked with, especially in the capital region, all these counties I have for, you know, fundraising events um, and private shows when, you know, in the area. Um, and I really think that if that empowerment and that inside feeling is brighter, then everything will be brighter. Your outlook will be brighter and the streets will be brighter in a way yeah. of their vibrance. Yes. And That's it seems like a simple thing, like, like, oh no, that wouldn't make a difference. But lighting, it yes. really does just yeah. change the whole atmosphere completely. I, t I said, and here's the example. I said, do you ever walk down the street and uh, you got to cut through a, 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 another street and the streets are out, but one street down, there's lights on, which would you go? And they're like, probably the lights. I go, yeah, you see, you just answered the question. Yep. That's exactly the reasoning for it. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, you don't know. It's, look, it's life. It's still, the world is still always going to be a cruel, cold place. You just got to try to find the bright spots and yeah. then bring those people around uh, to, to help fulfill it, truthfully. Yeah. But it's, you're, you're right. Schenectady is, um, well, you know, they, they were doing well. I feel bad for, you know, the, the, the theaters and, and the downtowns uh, yeah. just being, you know, shuttered. COVID's really hindered that community, that whole, um, not community, that that whole, um, you know, vertical of business. Yeah. Oh, the, sure. the, the hospitality industry, the entertainment yeah. industry. Oh yeah. They've been hit so hard in the past six months. I mean, I, and we're talking billion dollar industries like entertainment yeah. are, are suffering mm -hmm. fashion week, the, the, the big four for fashion week, that was all canceled and they yeah. had art it like happened at just the wrong time where like they had literally paris or milan rather new york everybody like ready to go all these people are hired all of these things are booked all of this yeah. clothes have been made all of this planning has gone into it and they lost all of that it, and the, oh yeah ugh, there was no way to recover well, you know, that no there's not and it trickles right down to the streets so about three weeks ago maybe um end of august there was an article in the new york times and they had a couple of you know they're talking about stores shutting down right fifth ab and uh victoria's secret victoria's secret stuck out they closed their shop do you much do you know how much the rent was a month what what was it like a million was it crazy nine hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars jesus almost a million dollars in rent yeah holy crap. there was a, i think it was the gap in herald square in new york city <laughs> 260 some two, was it two, 263 i think it was can you imagine greg no can you no, imagine <laughs> <laughs> never in my life would i spend a million dollars in rent no and you can really tell how you know how expensive victoria's secret is to the yeah, gap i right. mean i know there are different locales within manhattan but oh my good lord Oh, I wonder how no, much revenue they that. were doing annually. I'd really be interested in seeing those numbers, but yeah. we'll never know. <laughs> but you know, to that, to those, to the, yeah, right. To those, uh, to your points though, about that. So think about, um, you know, these rent, we all, if you're familiar with, you know, studying of cities in the U S everyone knows Manhattan is a mm -hmm. truly an expensive city and, you know, prices are dropping because it'll stay high, but they've come down a little bit. Yeah. Um, but the, I find the places that have been doing uh, work from home, even a store like Victoria's Secret, I mean, they have enough money to build a warehouse like Amazon uh, just did in, in the capital region and then just ship it out. What's the big yeah. deal? 
It, I mean, it maybe well, different for a girl though. You know, you got to go in and yeah, try it on. Guys, are, I don't say, go in and go and I'll try it on. You know, so I was going to say, it. consider the demographic here, my yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, true. I know. I'm not buying a fifty dollar bra online before I try it on my tatas. I'm sorry. No, it's got to fit. You know what? <laughs> I do the same thing. So you're right. Yeah. You're right. I hope but you get you, your bras fitted professionally. <laughs> yeah, uh, I do. Uh, well, I'll I'll give you the number uh, off air. Uh, <laughs> But you know, to that point though, but you realize that, right? So you started out the whole conversation and it's all business. So it comes down to the dollar, unfortunately, but it just does. Yeah. And you've got these companies that are, they're, they're showing it. Like, yeah, we don't want to spend a million dollars a year in rent. No. A month, a month. A right? month. Yeah, That's this is 12, what they were you know, 12 million a year. Are they willing to pivot and make changes to be able to ship out to their, you know, if I was, if I was, if I were yeah. Victoria's Secret. Sure. If I was that guy, I'm sure he's famous and I should know his name. I don't. But the guy uh, who owns Victoria's Secret. It's her secret. It's a secret. Oh, that's. That's her secret. That's the secret. Nobody <laughs> yeah. knows who all, uh, If I was that guy or gal. Yeah. I would go, all right. I got the money. If I've got the money to spend a million dollars a month in rent, then I can spend a million dollar in salaries and pay um, professional seamstresses or professional, you know, women to go to your house to go and do in-home visits and do do go back to what we used to do. Do the in-home sale, bro. Yeah. Have somebody come in, measure you out, show you some inventory in a catalog, go over what's going to fit you. Do if, if you got a million dollars to spend in rent monthly, then you could be spending that money on, on uh, people. That's well, two things, right? Come to mind with that. That's a gr fantastic idea. It's a throwback, and I love it. Uh, it. It might be a tad difficult with COVID, and if I had a million dollars to spend in rent every month, I would just keep the million dollars every month. <laughs> Like, you know what? Hey, if you need me, just call me. I'm going to yeah. be somewhere. You know, I'm just, just going to pocket this million right here. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I might be in uh, Hawaii oh, next week or Tulsa. You don't know. No. Third world problems. Third world problems. <laughs> yeah. My right. None. You know, it, hopefully we'll have them one day. Maybe we'll have million dollar problems one day. You and I. We're going to do it. We're going to, we're going to do make it. it together. You know, it's funny. I just, have you seen that uh, Netflix special? I'm not your guru by Anthony Robbins, you know, Tony Robbins. Did you see that no. yet by chance? No, but I'm it, writing it's it down. It's interesting. I watched it last night and it's, it's, uh, um, I want to believe it. It's uh, maybe, I think it might've come out in 2014, maybe. Oh, 2014, really? 2014. Yeah. 2014, 2015. And it's funny because, you know, the, the, uh, I've always, I've always admired that guy's story from years ago. And, uh, yeah. you yeah, know, he's and he got really a really works, great background. Yeah. And, and it's in his struggles and, and it's, yeah. it's a six day documentary in two hours. The guy actually did some documentaries for Metallica did it. Bellinger is I think his name, but it's, 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 it's good. That guy has a ton of energy. Oh yeah. And talk about homes, his home. Is, is it insane. crazy? <gasps> yeah. I mean, it's right on the ocean in Florida, but it like bleeds into his property. Like it's your, it's, this is what, if I ever, if I had a chance to talk to him, I would say what, what I love most about it is I'm not into all the fancy things. Like I'm not a two yeah. car boat. I'm not that guy. Me either. But I love the feel of it and his whole feel of how it looks. It feeds into his whole being yeah it's pretty sick yeah they don't make mention of it, it but when you see it if you're intuitive I, th I think you would you would enjoy it it's like, holy cow it's great but anyway that's i didn't really mean to cool. digress no no that's <laughs> really cool yeah if i ever if i ever became a millionaire nobody yeah. would know it because i probably wouldn't change much like i might pay off my house and be totally debt free and have an insane bank account but the likelihood yeah. of me buying a mansion and a bunch of cars and looking super fancy and buying clothes i don't even buy my own wardrobe i'm going to tell you all a secret just a, this is a, Ooh, greg, right. yes. a greg exclusive secret okay all right i don't shop for my own wardrobe i hate shopping I am the, I am oh, that, I okay. hate the only, the, I'll buy my makeup and stuff, but I get it from a yeah. one, one lady show. Like I ask her to do my, that's it. And I don't go to stores. I hate looking at shoes. I hate looking mm. at clothes. I hate trying them on. I hate shopping. I hate it. I hate spending money. I'm a big, like, 
I'm stingy as hell when it comes to clothes. I just don't <laughs> see the purpose. If I got something yeah, covering yeah. myself, who cares? I could wear a freaking tunic, the same one every damn day, and I'd be happy with myself. I have no, yeah. and I have no sense of fashion. My husband, oh my God, he's going to be so mad when he watches this episode. My husband okay. is Metro. He doesn't know it, but he's Metro. Okay. He doesn't know it. Now he, he does. Now he knows. <laughs> no, he has, he probably doesn't even know what Metro is, but the man is Metro. When I met him, I, I was like, oh man, I made a boo-boo. He's gay. And he doesn't even realize it. First time I saw his apartment, I was like, oh, he's gay. Shoot. <laughs> Miss, hit and miss. He had everything hit was miss. hit and miss. Everything was crisp, clean. He had teddy bears, okay? He had teddy bears, flowers, and little candles in his bedroom. And I was like, oh, shoot, dude. Miss, total miss. <laughs> everything was like crisp, ironed. The man is meticulous in his style and fashion. He always looks incredible. His hair is always done. He's gorgeous. He's an ado my Adonis. He's amazing. I love him. <laughs> he shops for my clothes. He buys, that's the secret. I don't buy my clothes. My husband shops and buys Almost my entire wardrobe was purchased by my husband. Well, I have to say he does a good job. He doesn't. Thank you. This is my work shirt. <laughs> oh, there you go. Look at that. He even irons the work shirts. No, I do that. I steam and stuff. He's not, he doesn't have no time for that. But the man shops for me because he knows I hate going to the store. And when he makes me yeah. go because he's like, no, what we're trying on today, you actually have to put on your body. I'm like, oh. <laughs> okay, let me take a couple of Prozac. I like to pop pills and go shopping. I hate it. I hate shopping. So that's the secret revealed. Jolene does not buy her own wardrobe. Her handsome husband does it for her. And he's got a good eye. He really does. He's, he, he's good for him. Yes. Kudos to you, Jorge. Yeah, yeah. Don't be mad at me for he always. He, oh, whenever I mention bravo. him in an episode, every time I mention him in, in an episode, he gets mad and he's like, "Why are you talking about me?" I'm like. Dude, don't get, don't get snotty. I'll start posting your picture too. I'll yeah. post your picture on there. That'll be the next secret exclusive, folks. <laughs> yeah, but maybe you just set up an old your own side hustle with your husband. <laughs> now he can shop for other ladies that don't want it. You see? Oh my God, that got to be thinking. Listen, I'm trying to keep this man to myself, Greg. If the secret gets out that I've got such an incredible dude, it's gonna there's gonna be a lot of competitors out there, and I gotta say, I don't want to fist fight anymore. Talk about what, yeah. what's up at Quail Auto. What's, what's new there? What's, how is the pivoting going for this? Because I know that COVID has hit car dealerships in a special kind of way. Yeah, well, I'm thankful that my family's business uh, never had to close. There was the mandatory lockdown. Uh, but other than that, because of the garage, that uh, the repair shop, is um es essential essential yeah thank you forgive yeah, me yeah 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 no you're essential. good essential so uh that's very thankful for that and then the sales started picking up and i i'm very happy because we're small business yeah you know there's what there's maybe you know 12 to 15 cars on the lot at all times and you know my father and brother run the sales and my older brother runs uh the body shop and and it's um, very thankful to, you know, but we've always been thankful. I, I think that the, the, the people I found with COVID and everything that's going on, to answer your point about quail and everything, is the people I found that were, had found peace before COVID are okay now. So they are thankful and the thankful people that, and I'm not saying everyone's not thankful. I'm not saying that at all. No, yeah. I mean, in, in the sense of such an awareness every single day before this, and, and truly, these are my, my family members and mentors that I've looked up to when you hear these stories growing up, and everything was so humble and thankful. And, and I mean that, people who know me, that is 100% core of my being and where I'm from. That's how my whole family is. Yeah. And I've noticed that trend throughout, you know, obviously the country, well, first the state, the country, and the world. Yeah. You know, I think faith is, is I'm not a holy roller. I don't impose it. I, I, I do attend, you know, Catholic mass every week. I don't agree with everything in the church. Um, but I know there's more good than bad and evil. Yeah. And I feel that, you know, all of that combined has helped the, you know, and we're thankful for that to have the business sustain itself after 77 years. And it's not easy. It's not easy in no, New York yeah. state. And New York State is yeah. one of the most highest tax states. It, it does not support as much as they say they do. It really don't support small business, mm -hmm. as they say. It, and, and it's just the truth needs to be told about that. And I'm not saying uh, that they're evil or nefarious in the ways that they're coming to get you. Well, maybe I don't know. Maybe they are. But uh, we wouldn't know. We would never well, we find would out. Know. 
Uh, you wouldn't know, but to, to, to way they tell that you know New York's a place in this that now. This is why a, a lot of the states, the rest of the states in our country, historically very much dislike New York State because they know who runs it in a very everyone who runs it is this whole mob mentality of sort. Yeah, and we're the best and you're not when in reality have you gone out and seen the country and the world because there's beautiful places and there's beautiful people instead of trying to be competitive in a jealous way how about just accept that that's the gift to the world and that is like the whole that. purpose of this podcast greg yeah. you just boiled everything that i want to express and entertain on this podcast in one yeah. little one minute segment right. that, hey. that's like everything new york is yeah. the, one of the hardest places in and i'm going to say yeah. in the world to do business as an individual yeah. who has opened businesses in another country i will tell you that I've opened businesses here, I've opened businesses in Mexico remotely, and it was easier to do business in Mexico than it was here. And I'm not even a Mexican citizen. I mean, I had to go yeah. through hoops, but it was not, it was not, it was nothing compared to doing business in New York. They tax you to death, they regulate yep. you out the ears, and they make it very difficult, which is why I yeah. respect so much the entrepreneurs who make it here. And that's why yeah. I, ha I do this. I want to talk about the positive things that are happening in the business community, despite yeah. the bad, the bad rep that it gets, because I think yeah. we have some of the most tenacious, hardworking individuals in, in entrepreneurship, non for profits and in, in the business world in New York. It's, it's hard to be a business owner here, but the ones yeah. who are doing it, man, kudos to you. That's why I am here doing this. I yeah. want to talk to those people. You know what I mean? So I yeah. love that you just said all that because it's so true. This oh, is, you know, and you. there is a lot you, of yeah. uh, talk about, you know, how oh, we're so we're great. We're the greatest in the world. Uh, nah, nah. You've never been to you another know, country then if you're saying that, <laughs> you know? I've well, the thing that's America. the greatest in the world is this. This is why I will agree with you this. Because at this moment in time, this is the most... Uh, this is the mo most diverse population that's ever lived under one roof in the history of the world. Agreed. In the history of the world. New York is right? amazing for that. So the New York, the country, it's just that, it's just that way. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I feel that if you, you, this is where I feel though things got out of whack because you got to adhere to some stable laws. So everyone that comes into the country, right? Yes, welcome and it's great. My relatives came in that way, right? right. And yeah. okay, this is the route we took and then we got here. They never expected the United States to bend the rules of how it was in Italy. They were like, no, this is great, we're coming here. Now it seems in 2020, you got to keep bending rules and regulations for everything that's coming in. I, and I think that's where it's getting confusing with everybody. And it, that trickles down, right down to small business. That whole approach and mentality j crushes small business. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's, there's no template. And if there is a template, there's scratch outs, white outs, and now we're going to try it this way. And you can't make exceptions when it comes to like no, the, the law. There, there's this, exactly that. There, there shouldn't necessarily be exceptions to one group of individuals and not another, no. especially right. when we're getting taxed so yeah. to such a detrimental point for certain businesses. And again, small businesses are the ones who suffer the most. So when, when that trickle down in, in terms of tax and regulation and rules, when, when that happens to us and then we see another group getting a free ride, yeah. It's annoying. It's annoying it's, it's, to put in all it, this work just for why? For why? Yeah, well, exactly. Well, see, this is where the hypo it's, it's the hypocrite statements I, I found over the years, right? I'm, I don't point fingers. I'm just saying it's, it's been building for years. Uh, but they, everyone talks about empowerment. Um, I, the, I, I come from roots of people lifting people up in, in, in uh, suburbs, and in, I have very good understanding of urban city life, USA. Yeah. And when, to your point is in those parts, the, there's no real empowerment. It's narcotic. It's it, you just keep enabling. And 
you, you, everyone has to be honest about that. Mm -hmm. And everyone talks, no, we're empowering. That's not empowering. That literally is giving a child a chocolate bar every day after school, because if not, they're going to cry. That doesn't teach anything. It teaches one response. We all know that life is multiple responses, multiple, you know, sparks of synapses going off. You have to handle that. And as your brain grows and you get to a point in life, you're supposed to be an adult and live it as a business. Your life is a business. Yeah, there's yeah. fun in it. I'm in show business. What built my brand, Jolene, was this. Organization, because I grew up in a business, because you know everything matters. You dump the trash, you sweep the floors. Everything matters. Yep. There's not someone doing it. I pay everyone that steps foot on my stage every show in full before the show starts. Everyone's paid in full done because I want the business to be done. Now let's enjoy the show. So I'm a huge proponent of time management. So I really espouse and I do this in keynote talks is if you really focus in on how are you utilizing your time, really, really focus in on it. Because every day you can start something new and get to each goal that you set. I mean that without being overwhelmed. Yeah. You, if you get things done, right? You set deadlines. This is not new. These, this is old news. And, but I see it quite often. You will, if you hit those deadlines, that's when life, you become fulfilled because that gives you the freedom to spend with a loved one. Um, you know, to, to, you know, try, you know, learning an instrument, travel, something. And um, it, all of that is, is part of small business, to your point. And there's so much behind what goes into small business. Uh, and it's, it, it makes me sad, especially in New York State. Of, and, and I have multiple friends with small businesses and large businesses. And you get hammered. There's no meeting in the middle. Mm -mm. There's none. And I hope moving forward, because I feel at this time, everyone's at the same starting line. We really can move forward together. It's sort of like that, sort of like that feeling of 9-11. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. I felt that the past few months, like the community is really starting to become more cohesive. I'm seeing a lot of people coming out and and volunteering, offering their services for free or at a reduced cost to try to assist other businesses yeah. who are struggling through this yep. time. I've really seen a community kind of bind together. And, and of course, because I'm so ingrained in the business community and what I do is it within the business community, a lot of that I've, of what I've seen is from businesses, entrepreneurs, non-for-profits that are doing these, this, this amazing kind of like drawing together of the community. But I, I think it, I, I think it does trickle down to a personal way as well, like families getting closer together, families spending yeah. more time together than they used to. I think the family dinner could make a comeback. I think in, yeah. in our family, and it's probably the same in yours, Sunday. every Sunday you have yeah. family with you. It's a family dinner. You, yeah. And it's just a given. You don't have to plan it. You don't have to. It's just, you show up at your mama's house and everybody's having dinner together. And if you don't, she's calling you like, hello. Yeah. Or you better call her ahead of time. At least in my family. I get yelled yeah, at. Oh, yeah. I get yeah. yelled at. <laughs> She'll ask me, what time is dinner tonight? When are we eating? Yeah, and it's when great. Do, when do I have to get the food started? Because that, and, and I think that should make a comeback because that's what really makes the, that solid sense of community. If you have a sense of family yeah. and a sense of closeness within your own, you know, um, family unit. Yeah. That, later on, you, you build and create relationships that emulate that. If you grow up in a broken environment where you don't yeah. have relationships with people who are supposed to be the closest to you and you end up a loner and you, you see other loners just kind of making it through, you end up in this cycle of an, a poverty mindset, this impoverished mindset. Yeah, 100%. And, it, you know, if your audience – so, so two and a half years ago, I, I really started getting socially involved because there was a murder that happened in front of our business. And uh, we're very proud. The block that our business is on it is named after uh, our last name, Adela, Adela Way in, in, in Albany. And we're very, very honored and thankful for that. 
And so what happened was, you know, I sent the mayor an email. This was January of 2018. And I introduced myself, who we are, who we were. Uh, and I said, you know, um, we would love to sit down with you and, and talk about what we've seen in our experience here in the city. Um, and and I, I do have, you know, um, some possible ideas that, I, you know, I could help with, you know, and, and meet right. in the middle. And I didn't hear anything for three months. So I got my friends together, uh, filmmaker friends, and I made a video making a plea, um, you know, to the city to come up and talk with us. Um, you know, gave the history of our place. I interviewed my friend next door, Demetrius, who owns a daycare. And that shooting that occurred was a drive-by. So one of the bullets uh, missed my father's office by eight feet. And the, another stray hit the daycare center. But luckily, the kids are sleeping. Oh, my yeah. God. So you did all, the, the day I launched that, and that video went viral. <clears throat> I don't know if you've seen them. It's on my social media pieces. And uh, then, you know, the Times Union in Albany had me on the front page. And then I was interviewed by CBS and ABC. And I was getting stuff from National. And I said, uh, I got a call that afternoon from City Hall and said, oh, the mayor, they, she lost her email, but she wants to meet with you. Now, when I say lost my email, it, literally that's their words. It's on CBS 6 in Albany on tape that they lost my email. Now, okay, things get busy. But if you're losing emails, what else are you losing? They're not so losing There's the emails. bigger thing, right? They so weren't losing emails. it comes into play emails. like that, right? They so, saw that you thought you had your moment in the light there with the and PR was on you already and they wanted to seem responsive and that's what really probably happened, but they didn't lose your friggin' email. Yeah, right, perhaps. But since then, I've really, really taken and I've done other passion pieces and followed up. I've walked the streets of the West Hill. I've in, you know, uh, interviewed residents, businesses, uh, black delegates, white delegates, uh, black business owners, white business owners, uh, Saudi Arabian business owners that, that they're from Saudi Arabia, uh, a block down from us. And nothing seemed to get through because in the way of accountability, accountability. So, and this is what I mean. I asked in that video, I said, you know, this shooting goes on and this is a notorious corner. If anyone in the capital region knows, yeah, it's right. It's, it's first and quail. That that's our front step. So I get passionate about it because it's our front step and it's our business and the neighbors and even the, uh, you know, people who are possibly in illegal business. And I know, you know, I, I, we all say hello to them. I don't, you know, they have respect for my dad and we respect them. That's where trust is ingrained. So I asked politicians to come up and walk the streets. You got to get a little bit more Mayberry. I mentioned that same unquote Mayberry in, in, in my, um, in, in my video. And so I asked the mayor in her office with my father and, and, and like I said, this is not a dog pile or pick, picking on anybody. It's right. not, it's business. Yeah. And, and I, she said, am I just show up every time, you know, something happens in the city, if there's a murder? Yes. And I said, yes, yeah. 100%. Now here's the thing. I understand busy schedules. Right. I can respect that of a mayor. But here's another thing that people don't talk about enough. And it certainly does not get pounded or covered by any type of media that I've known in, in the, in the, I shouldn't say none, but not enough, I should say. Uh, but there are, uh, you know, definitely responsible uh, journalists doing their part. I said, if you can't show up, you should, as a leader, your whole, everyone that you oversee should, should know, okay, ward leader, there was a, a fracas or a murder up on this block. Go up. Because when you show up, I told her this, and I say it on videos, when you show mm -hmm. up, it's just like anything else, business or personal. People have trust. Yeah. They understand, I couldn't have stopped that crime. Right. I, could, I can't be everywhere, but I'm here, and I want you to know we are listening. Yeah, they know that show you care up. about your community. Exactly, and continuously, this community, the leaders turn their back. 
and they say they don't, and they do. And it's, 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 it's been inherited down right until present administration. And I, 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 I'm very high road. I never attack. But there are some serious truths that if people really want to be adults and see what's going on in the world, mm-hmm. how everything, how you realize there is so much more that's bigger than you, yourself, then have some humility uh, and just, just communicate and face head on with people. Stop turning your back. It doesn't do any good. Everyone knows that. If, you, if yeah. you're in a personal relationship or business, it doesn't do anything to sweep the face the, it. They're, they're under the rug. Face the music. Face it. That's and what it's so crazy. Is. A, a mayor that would ask if, if every time something like something came up, I should show up. Of course, that's like your isn't that your job? Like what, yeah. what, when I think of the mayor, I don't see some person with a top hat and a monocle just sitting in their office chugging on on beer and, yeah. and smoking a cigar. You should be out in your community, getting to know your constituents what their needs are and what, what is lacking in your community and what's doing great. What's doing great. Let's make more of that and let's fix the other thing. You know, how would you ask if you should show up? Of course you should show up. Well, yeah, that's a hundred percent. Well, first of all, what you just said, the, the, the top hat and a monocle, that'd be cool to have a mayor who's a monopoly guy though. That'd be I'll tell cool. you, I'll do a video if you, if you want me to, Greg, I'll make it happen. Uh, okay. I think it's so great. But you know, to your point, okay. So, you, you know, I, I can't wait to see that video, by the way, I'm going to hold you to it. Uh, the, you know, to your point about, you, you know, what, what you hear sometimes people say is in 2020. So I had a, a couple piece, uh, pieces, uh, passion pieces I dropped this summer, July and August. And I was interviewed by uh, CBS six a couple times uh, recently about them. And, you know, talking about lack of empathy and lack of humanity. And those two, two things are very important to me. Yeah. The mayor said in print in the Times Union, and I used it in my piece, I showed it. Now, the, the, these shootings, now there's what, 105, 104, 105 shootings in Albany, and they're retaliatory, right? Mm-hmm. She said, if, you, if you're an innocent victim and you're hit by one of these stray bullets that, weren't inten- that was not intended for you, you're at the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, okay. So I said, if that's the wrong place being... Uh, you know, on your property, seeing family and friends, my family conducting business and they're hit and they're hit and it's the wrong place at the wrong time. You're I the asked, wrong I mayor said, at the wrong time. Sorry. Yeah. I said, then what's the right place? What's the right place? How do you say that? So oh this is what, this is what I feel. This 2020 is when S H T got real. Yeah. Okay. It For sure everything is. and everyone. It sure did. So, so to what we've discussed, okay, nothing was caught up. Nothing was. You want to talk real? You want to talk about the region and empowerment and good people like you and I believe in, in the capital region as a whole, not one city, not one town, the yeah. capital region as a whole. I know there's some chilling, really cool kick, kick AWS people out there that are doing yeah. awesome stuff. They really are. You, it, it's truly, you, you can't have that mentality that you don't care. It's going to bleed into the water for everybody, mm-hmm. for everybody. Yes. It makes, it makes no sense. Um, and to, how do you explain, there was a seven-year-old that was shot in the leg by a stray bullet two weeks ago. How do you go to a parent and say, yeah. That kid was at the wrong place at the wrong time. He was at the park. Where else? Should really? He be? That's such a, such a such a lack of compassion and empathy. It, it, it is a hundred percent lack of caring for your community. Why are you mayor? I feel like political positions should be filled by individuals who have a true love and care for their community. There should be no yeah. fi- financial motive. There should be no power motive. I, yeah. I don't know how you would test that of an individual, but there should be some yeah. way to filter these idiots out because if yeah. you're in a public service position yeah. and not serving the public, quit. Yeah. Quit your job. You suck. Well, that's, it's so great. You're right. You're spot on with that because you know, that's what tax dollars go towards. You're supposed to have safety and you're supposed to keep stuff clean. Yeah. And I've always said in my pieces, cleanliness equals hope, equals community, equals prosperity. 
And it's you such got a it. simple it, thing. It's so it is. simple. It it's is. It's not hard I know. to achieve that. We, it, You and I both know not. that there is a simple way to approach all of that. But the, mm -hmm. the problem is, is that these folks have, you know, D double motives. They have ulterior motives involved in becoming a politician. It's to beef up their friends, their big high cap, yeah. you know, high, the top hat monocle dude. Yeah. You know, it's to make him another million by helping him get a kickback at his business, or it's to just, to, just all in all, just to be powerful, just to have power yeah. of some kind. And they don't, they don't manage it well because they're only good at managing power, not people. People don't yeah. care about your position. The people of the community, we don't care. I don't care that you're the mayor. I'll talk to you the same way I talk to the guy who's, right. who's doing the sweet sweeping or, yep. or, or the yep. street sweeping. I, yep. I don't give a crap about your title. What I care about is the results that you're getting. If you're yes. not getting results, it's because you don't care and you should quit because you suck at your job. That's I would right. fire you if I was your boss. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. They, they, they never fly in private business. They wouldn't fly. No. And, and you're right. It all caters to the money. They don't know the people on the street. They don't. And I'll tell you something. There's great people that I've met, and I've got two more pieces coming out in the next month in, in the inner cities that I'm showcasing yeah. for people to see what's really happening. And uh, it's... Um, the talent and that comes from this area is so incredible. Yeah, I agree, a hundred percent. And and everything is, uh, uh, it's just a really good. T now I'm a positive person. People know that about yeah. me, and I always see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. And this, I really do feel that if, if, if people can meet in the middle and be co-creative and just open to humility. And just, just be who they are and the gifts that they have. It can work together. I, I'm a big fan of Abe Lincoln. Now, Abe Lincoln could have made the country go one way, but he brought it together, in my opinion. And there's a great book um, called Team of Rivals. That's they based the, the, the movie uh, Lincoln on um, Joyce uh, or um, uh, Goodwin Kearns. And Doris Goodwin Kearns, she's great. I met her once at a, I geeked out at a SUNY Albany uh, <laughs> book fest. It was great. But that, that book is great because it, the, the philosophy, what Lincoln did, right? So when Lincoln won his presidency, he brought everyone that was opposed, that opposed him on his team. And they were bewildered, you know, because anyone else would be like, what's this guy up to? And why do you want us? And he said, I don't know everything. You guys know a little bit about this that makes it, a whole. That philosophy, as to your point, is so simple in a way of getting people together and doing what's right. And I think what comes out of that too, Jolene, are term limits. Yeah. Some of these people that you got to get out. Enough. Done. We got, we got, we done. So done. Be, talk about a cancel culture. How about start canceling some of these politicians? Why not? If you want to, you know, it's I'll just. I'll make a list. I'll start. Yeah, right now. I'll start your cancel list. I got, I got list. my list. I'm write a petition right now, dude. <laughs> no, seriously, there's issues. Yeah. We got issues, and it yeah. does come down to the people. They just, again, they they go for that power grab. They get the power, and they find ways just to stay in that position. And I feel yeah. like that's what they work towards: staying in their position towards working towards fixing the community, fixing the issues yeah. that it has and, and uplifting it, making it better. Well, look at, yeah. let, let's just not to name names, but Cuomo, why the hell would you waste time on a license plate and all that money on a license plate change? Totally unnecessary, did nothing for the people, served no real purpose towards yeah. New York, wasted a bunch of tax dollars and time on that. Why? So he could say at the end, oh, that I implemented this, the new license plate program. We put all, I love New York stickers all over New York. Who gives the damn. Yeah. It didn't do anything for me. It didn't do anything for Greg. It didn't do anything no. for the little girl who got shot in the leg two weeks ago in Albany. Yeah. It does nothing for the people. Yeah. Nothing. It's a nothing. waste of time. That's, and that's what they do. They find ways to stay relevant. They find ways mm -hmm. to stay, uh, you know, maybe looking good on camera and, and, yeah. and that's it. Yeah, because it's a big bully mentality, right? Because we can con continuously lie to children and, and talk about, you know, bullying one way when there's all types of bullying. Everyone was, I could say I was, mm -hmm. I sure was, but I maneuvered around it 
And I wasn't lied to about it because the entire adult world is nothing but bullying. Nothing. And to wow. your point of Cuomo, come on. He, he's, he's a reckless, uh, maniacal tyrant. I, agree. I think he in, has in, evil. In, in, in some I do ways. think of all the politicians that I could name and say that, you know, there are some who really, they're just in... They, they just got in over their heads and those that are really actually evil, I would say Cuomo's probably at the top of the evil list. Yeah, it's really, tr and I'm in the uh, middle. I'm very evil. Switzerland on politics. I see, yeah. I really, I, I'm one of the people that really looks into it and I, I'm public yeah. about that. Um, but my Lord, when they do these things to your point of, you know, oh, does it matter? And we're just going to do it. Well, how about that? Let's get back to it's the people. Why don't we vote on this stuff? Very simple. Nobody would have we said vote they on this? license plate change. They would have yeah. said we want more lights in downtown Albany. We, we want better bus stops in downtown Albany. We want more emergency boxes. You know those blue boxes that they put the, on the campuses that yeah. call the police directly? Yeah. That, those boxes all over downtown Albany would change the whole setup. Also, maybe they could give some money and they could, you know, uh, invest in Albany's high school. Mm -hmm. You know, how about oh, get the yeah. schools functioning? Let's get that going. You know, you're worrying about uh, taking down statues and, and, and everything of that nature. Uh, it, but you, you, you can't balance a budget. You, you can't have a passing high school. I mean, no. where, when, when finally are people, smart people going to push back? And I'm not talking yeah. violent because that goes nowhere. You no, don't even get really me going doesn't. on that garbage. It really doesn't. It, but, yeah, it's no, garbage. But, but like get noisy, get noisy in that. Like we won't yes. stop, we won't stop asking you to provide this until it's been provided. Right. And here's my community of people who are on board with, we want this yeah. change and you need to yeah. man up or man out, get out by. Yeah. Hundred percent. Nobody's gonna miss yeah. you. Oh my God! You're canceled. I you cancel culture. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I would be so canceled in a second. Like I can see myself totally getting canceled. <laughs> I could. I, uh, yeah, I would probably just laugh it off, or I don't think I'm not I even. Don't new. I don't think canceled. I'd ever be famous enough to get canceled. But if I did, <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely cancelable. I make enough mistakes. No, that's great. I wish. No I wish we could talk more. This is getting. Yeah, I know. This is we're great. running over time. We're gonna have to have another I, conversation. I do want. We will. I do want to uh, let you know this, in audience. So I, I got got out of New York um, March first. I came back to the Capital Region for. Uh, to sunk down for COVID, but I just, I filmed a, a spot. I got a show on um, uh, a new show on MTV. That'll be airing within the next month. That's a prank revenge with uh, a couple of guys from the Jersey shore. MTV was very cool to me. I got a part uh, back in February and cool. uh, f filmed it down in Long Island. So that'll be coming out. And you know, um, you can learn about my coaching business at coachmegreg.com or my entertainment business at gregadella.com. And um, I just want to say, I, uh, I had fun today talking with you. I like what you're doing. I'm glad that our paths crossed. Yeah, same. And uh, I really, I like your energy. And I think it's, it's, it's uh, I'm, I, I'm very happy that you're lending your voice. And there's more and more really uh, good intellectual conversation, conversational talks that I'm finding in my hometown and it's coming from people like you. So, so yeah. keep it up. And I, I wish you success. And, and Thank thanks you. to your audience for, for coming along. For Absolutely. A jibber jabber story from this guy. <laughs> I love your energy too. And I really appreciate you, you being on the show. We share a lot of love for New York and, and that's what it's all about. That's, that's the only reason I started this podcast a couple of months yeah. ago. I'm really glad to see it has grown to where it has. It shows that there's an audience of people who, who are, are interested in entrepreneurship in this area, but, but also who, who are speaking for it in this area. Mm -hmm. And, and that the, when the business community thrives, the community thrives. When, when businesses do well, communities do well. It's, oh. it's just, it's known. Mm -hmm. So that's, Absolutely. that's what I want to see. I want to promote businesses. I want to give them a place to talk about what they're doing, where they're going, uh, you know, what challenges they're having so that, you know, the people yeah. who are listening can go, Hey, this, these people in my community need this need filled. And maybe there's somebody out there listening who needs, I've had people come on the show yeah, who said, cool. Hey, I got a client because they watched me on the podcast. And, and then I had this guy who, uh, you know, sent me his services and it was really needed. And he helped me it. And I go, yeah, <laughs> that's what it's about. Yeah. yeah perfect. Kudos. Thank you. I love it. I love that, it. Yeah. That's what it's about. Like just 
love where you're at people love the people yeah. around you please yeah and and get out and talk with them yeah don't just text get out everyone needs to get out of the electronic age and start interacting uh even with a mask on get around people yes. i make sure i've been having fire pit uh chats all summer long awesome it's important <laughs> it's great to have you on greg yeah thanks so much thank you so much i love your energy i love everything you do if you ever right need anything yeah. from me i'm your girl and right happy friday everybody happy friday